Hmm. All right. We did a rollback. Okay. Me. I rolled back this last Windows update. I think it was destroying my. Are you still here? God damn, bro. You got DDoS or what? No, I, there was a Windows update this morning that I did, and it, my computer just like, has frozen three times, so I rolled it back. Hopefully that Jesus fixes it. Jesus Christ. Yeah, true. Bill Gates f me. All right. Sorry. Um, <sighs> looks like J.D. Vance is the pick. Did you guess that was going to be his VP or what? Uh, a lot of people have been talking about him over the past two days. Was this like leaked or something? or? No, he was going to announce it today. I think, I think it's officially announced. Yeah, but I feel like I've seen his name a lot over the past couple of days. Have you not? Have you? Am I crazy? Yeah, no, he's, oh, he's yeah. one of the finalists. Him, Marco Rubio, and Doug Burgum. Oh, it's never going to be Rubio. I don't know about the Doug guy. I don't know anything about him, but... Wow. Do um, you know anything about this guy? Yeah, I mean, he was a never-Trumper back in, like, 2016. Since then, he's uh, he's fallen in line. and probably got his life threatened or something. I don't know. But senator from Ohio, Ma I mean, sounds pretty crazy, says crazy shit all the time. I just thought Trump would pick a total loyalist because he wants somebody who's going to do everything he says this time around. Poor Tim Scott had to fake a girlfriend in marriage and all that stuff. I wonder if they'll break up now. Oh, no. You don't think this guy would be a total Trump dick suck? J.D. Vance? Yeah. No, he is a total Trump dick writer, yeah. He was, back in 2016, a never Trumper. You kind of talk shit on Trump, but uh -huh. that's a, you know, Trump forgives when you come down and kiss the ring. But I think it'll cause some internal fighting with the Republicans because of his past comments, for sure. What internal but fighting? Was, Why would you... Wait, what internal fighting? Well, because some... Trump supporters will say this guy was disloyal back in, you know, 2016. Who the fuck he cares? He's, Trump is unquestionable, and nobody will question any decisions he makes. There will be no <laughs> internal friction whatsoever. Absolutely not. No, it's, it won't be a big thing. It won't even be, be a thing. You know, no one will say anything. Uh, conservatives yeah. are, conser unless you're like a never-Trumper, in which case you're on your way out of the party anyway, so. No, that's fair. I think um, it's going to take attention away from his assassination stuff, too, because the media is going to focus on who is this guy and what's up with him, you know? Yeah. Can you, um, are you, do you work with the, um, uh, what's the, ch you posted on the channel, you got like a million views on it or more. Do you know what, what channel I'm talking about? The one with the... Occupied Democrats? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. can you do me a favor? Um... I need, can you guys do, I need you guys to start a project, okay? Can you take old Biden clips or old Democrat clips and like, uh, or, or rather old Trump clips and then like AI revoice them as Democrats and then see if you can make them go viral? I want to see, um, you know how everybody is freaking out because Trump, uh, or I'm sorry, because Biden just recently said like Trump needs to be in our bullseye and people are saying like, look, this is him inciting, you know, the fucking violence against Donald Trump or whatever. Have you seen that that blow up a little bit yesterday? Yeah, that was... That was a private call days ago yeah. before the shooting with donors. I need said, you to recode the um, the Donald Trump when he was at that rally saying, you know, uh, I guess there's nothing we can do about this or maybe the Second Amendment people can. I need to recode that as Biden. And I want that clip to go viral. I don't want to see how Trump will treat it. <laughs> I feel like he's made I'll, so I'll, many more unhinged comments. <laughs> I'll take that up with the... Uh with uh, people above me, and we'll see what we can do. Okay, thank you. I Please, God. Yes, that's though. what I need you to do. Thank I'm you sorry. so much. Okay. <laughs> we do mostly, like, go gossipy kind of stuff. Like, you won't believe what Melania said about Trump. So, I don't know if we'll go near that. But I get to exp I make the videos and I express everything I want to say, so I kind of feed people a bunch of news and info they wouldn't get otherwise, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Have you... Do, do Republicans in general still like McCarthy or no? Do you have any idea? Evan McCarthy? Yes. No. No, they all sucks. hate him now? They, yeah, he's, he sucks, man. He, his only relevancy is he gets on the news sometimes, well, recently, because he's trying to primary the people who got rid of him, like Matt Gates and stuff. You know, like yeah. he, anytime he'll come on TV and say Matt Gates slept with a minor and did drugs. Like that's that's basically his entire relevancy now. And he was, and that was just because he tried to hold the house together by making a deal with Democrats when he was the speaker. Or why did why did people hate him? Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
according to Matt Gates and them, they ousted him because he um, made deals with the Democrats. I mean, the Dem- Joe Biden walked all over him. More Democrats voted for those bills, raising the debt ceiling and keeping the government open than Republicans. Mm-hmm. So who won in the end there? <laughs> well, yeah, that's why they claim they ousted him. But Kevin McCarthy says they ousted him because he was investigating Matt Gates on the ethics committee for sleeping with minors. Behaves. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you going to keep? You see, it seems like you're. So did you get muted on Twitter? What the hell? Like, what, oh, Elon? Like, 12 hours for violent rhetoric. What yeah. does that mean, though? Muted? Um, yeah, it, they forced you to delete a tweet, and then you can't tweet or do anything on your Twitter account for 12 hours. You can't do anything on your Twitter account, but it just sits there. So people can still see your stuff, though. Yeah, you just can't like or retweet or do anything like that, Yeah. That's crazy. What is it, what is it like knowing Elon is sitting there fuming at you? That must make you feel so happy just laughing. Um I yeah, I guess. I mean, <laughs> like you triggered Elon Musk. I it's I guess it's just more annoying that like it's just all just annoying to me. Like yeah, conservatives like conservatives were screeching for so long about how important it was to have like freedom of speech and everything on um freedom of speech and everything on x but like when people they don't like are getting censored they fucking love it they're all here for it which i just think is right? fucking crazy yeah they got all sensitive about this I, I disagree with some of the things you said but the, i just see that they're flipping out while they were posting memes about paul pelosi getting hit in the head with a hammer and almost losing his life yeah or the um um gretchen whitmer that's the name right Kidnap, yeah. yeah that whole Whitmer. plot was like a joke or a meme or FBI inspired or whatever or, um, fuck, what else? People have emailed me so many examples. That remember when that guy got stabbed in New York, uh, and everybody and got murdered in front of his girlfriend. And everybody's laughing because he was a progressive and it's like, ah, oh, look, haha, this is what wokeness gets you. Do you remember that? I don't remember that one. You don't remember that one? Okay, maybe that was just more like an online thing. But there was, um, there was a guy that was walking with his girlfriend, and I think a black dude came up to him, and he, they stabbed him to death. Was it not in New York? Somebody said San Francisco. Was it San Francisco? But a guy came up, and they stabbed him to death, and everybody, at least on my timeline, was like fucking lighting this dude up. They said it was hilarious because um, because apparently this guy was a progressive, so they're like, look at what you get for being a progressive, yeah. Tim Pool said that it yeah, made him why- happy? No shot. Wait, Damn. Link me a tweet to that hoodie. I don't believe you. Did he actually say that? Yeah, that was insane. That's why, that's why, like I said, even if I disagree with what you're saying, I can appreciate that you're putting it right in the face of these people and showing them their hypocrisy and forcing them to Be take hypocrites. action even. Yeah. yeah, like you are forcing them to not just talk and show themselves to be complete hypocrites, but also take action like what Elon Musk did. That's crazy. Do you remember? How, do, didn't we get um? There's a lot of people that are speculating on, on Biden's senility, right? Yep. Am I making this up, or was this, was there an official statement from the APA that said that it was unethical to speculate publicly about Donald Trump's, like? mental anything do you remember this am i making this up no who's the apa i don't know that. was it the american psychology association or was it time magazine i thought that there was a i feel like i'm remembering that there was like an official statement um that was made that was saying it was highly unethical and that nobody who was practicing medicine everybody should refrain from making a statement about somebody please this is a big deal when it happened am i it's like seven years ago eight years ago wasn't it the goldwater rule oh yeah people bring up the goldwater rule do you, you don't remember this? No, I'm not familiar with that. The American Psychiatric Association adopted the Goldwater Rule in 1973, prohibiting members from offering psychological opinions about individuals whom they had not personally examined. This came up again during the Trump stuff, where people started to say it was unethical for anybody to talk about, um, to talk about or speculate about Trump's mental state. But I, it, that was interesting to me that that came up. God, Republicans enjoy so much protection it's fucking insane 
They're driving you nuts lately. Man. Yeah, they are because they're disgusting. It's because I've been. It's because I've just been reading more of the shit, and now my hatred is growing. It was the. It was reading. Th it was just three of them too. It was reading the three of the Federalist Papers. It was reading the full Supreme Court decisions, um, and then it was starting to analyze like a pattern of behavior, like knowing more, it was that reading that J six commission, all seven hundred fucking pages of it. Holy shit! It's horrible shit. It's really bad. It's all really bad. It's so bad. Um, well, the only, the only thing is, like, I see this as a political rally, and I hate that a, an American went to a political rally, no matter the content, no matter who was there, and lost their life. And so that's the only thing that that I don't like. And I know... That you don't like it by way. Say that again. Say what? I don't like that an American went to a political rally and lost their life, no matter what the sure, content Sure, but here's, was. Here, here's my issue. Here's my issue, okay? This is a big thing I have, okay? People keep saying, I've gotten into some personal arguments about this recently. People keep saying, it's just politics, it's just politics, it's just politics, okay? Fuck Americans that say shit like that. Because to America, for a lot of the time, especially if you're at least middle class, um, it is just politics. When they say it's just politics, what they mean is you go online and you post about it and then you log off, okay? If you're an Israeli citizen, if you are a member of Palestine, it's not just politics. Who the president is has like a material outcome on your life, okay? If you're a Russian soldier who's conscripted, if you're a Ukrainian soldier who's conscripted, uh, it's not just politics, right? Your life is on the line depending upon the, the decisions that the United States makes. If you exist in the Middle East and you're not entirely sure what Iran's nuclear policy is going to be, if you're a South Korean or Japanese citizen and you don't know what North Korea feels comfortable doing or not, um, if you're a Pakistani citizen or if you're Indian uh, and the United States is torturing their relationship with Pakistan, you don't know what that, right? People say it's just politics, but it's not. It has real material impacts on a lot of people around the world and it's starting to have real material impacts in the United States. I don't like this idea, and maybe I sound radical for saying this, but people will treat a stabbing or a shooting as an extreme form of action, but a vote at the ballot box is like a fucking meme. And it's really not. Like, the democracy lives and dies on the on the backs of its people and, and how much they wish to carry it forward, you know, through time and space. And if people don't give a fuck or if they vote for memes or whatever, and then they're like, wait, what? There are consequences for voting? There are consequences for supporting certain candidates? I'm not saying the consequence should be death or whatever, right? That's I'm not saying that anybody necessarily, like, deserves to die for a decision, but I think that people treat voting and they treat the supporting of certain candidates way too fucking lightly. Um, I think that... I think that Democrats need to treat support for Donald Trump as being as dire as conservatives have said that Democrats supporting people like Hillary have been for the past 10 years. Like, that's the level that it needs to be at, I think. And I think that everybody needs to be more aware of that. Yeah, but not, And I believe you. I think that's your underlying po point. I don't think you wanted anybody to die, you know. But I, I do agree with you. This is life and death to some people out there. Like, if I was a trans black woman, I would look at this as life and death if Trump wins. Sure. I mean, it, yeah, well, it doesn't know, even have to. You don't even. Have, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be life or death. You don't have to be a trans black. But I mean, there's a, like a, there's a lot of stuff that's at. <sighs> did you see the Did you see the Mar-a-Lago case getting dismissed this morning? I did, and that honestly kind of scares me, but. <laughs> I see the appeal is going to happen by Jack Smith, and they're probably going to ask for a different judge. So she may have just fired herself off this this case. Oh no! <laughs> what? What are you getting at? Like, wow! Oh no, she's not going to be on this case. Oh, you mean you think she'll get, like, would you call it? Is it disbarment? Do you get disbarred as a judge, or, or is it impeached, or what? No, you'd have to be impeached. Yeah, you'd have to be impeached and removed by the Senate. But no, a different judge will be assigned the case. Now, it'll happen next year, and yeah, she did what you said it earlier. She uh, did her job. She delayed it past the election. Mm -hmm. But I think, and you might disagree, that this will motivate people. As we get closer to the election, they'll start to hear about this shit. Not hearing about it right now. They're coming, you know, they're on July 4th vacation. How, I mean, how close, how close do we need what? to be? Well, when I was a normie, all I can do is speak from my own experience. When I was a normie who was just out there living my life, I didn't give a shit about politics until October, September, at best. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> but you still... Okay, so why do you think Biden has a chance then? Why do I think Biden has a chance? Um, I still think Trump is a big motivator of hate on the other side, that there's a lot of people that really don't like Trump, and I think abortion is still going to be um, a really big motivator for people. 
Fair enough. Yeah, I think the issues are what drives it in the end because it takes a lot to get people to come out to vote. I don't think people are going to come out to vote because they feel sorry for Trump or he almost got assassinated or whatever. Like, really? Isn't the whole point of Trump yeah. is that everybody's always against him all the time? I don't. I, I do agree with you. I don't think it's going to be as big. People are very stuck in like time where people see a thing like, oh, it's fucking all over. Like people do this with every single event and they'll continue to do it. I agree. It's not going to be like a mass murder, but I do think it's going to be he's going to bring this up over and over and over again. Right. This there will not be a single speech that goes by without him mentioning his attempted assassination and it will be a thing that motivates them a little bit more oh yeah it'll, it'll definitely motivate them more the existing people but like i said there's so few people out there that are undecided even right now that it's there's not really anyone to convince it's just like you said a matter of getting people out it's mm -hmm. about getting your base out and sure this will motivate his side a bit but um I think the issues are on our side. You look at the ele the elections. I don't think anybody. Elections. You say the issues, mm -hmm. but like, I think that I I would say that I think that the Biden campaign needs to move away from like issues based stuff, and it needs to be more slogans and memes. Because I don't think anybody's running on like what is like what policy does Trump talk about? What are his policy positions? Deporting twenty million people. <laughs> yeah, like we we don't even know. There's not even real. Like the conservatives don't even pretend to run on policy anymore. Well, he's got drill, baby, drill, shut the border. Dictator on day one. 20 million people. Yeah. I, I just think, in my mind, what gets people out to vote? It's, it's something has to personally impact them. It mm -hmm. can't be some, some drag queen show happening in San Francisco. They'll write about that on Twitter and get a bunch of noise. But voting is annoying. Like, you got to fill out a ballot. You got to drop it off at the the post office box or go to the polling place like most people don't give a shit about any of this and so you got to really care and have a reason to go out and vote and i don't think boring ass trump whose talking points are old and still crying about the 2020 election and hillary you know like the rob norris of the world aren't out there you know like most people are just chilling and and so it's going to come down to their lives being impacted abortion they're trying to take away my rights you know Break up families with immigration, like deporting 20 million people. That's insane. So democracy under threat. People are concerned about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all the idiots out there that think a picture of Trump raising his fist in the air with blood on his cheek is going to win the election is they're They're just foolish because the news cycle moves so quickly that in two weeks, people will have moved on and, and talking about something else. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll see. <laughs> I just uh yeah. I just don't want to see you lose your mind over this stuff, but I think you're having fun, right? It was like I think I was on like peak like peak stupid. Uh imagine like Dunning Kruger, but instead of like for intelligence, it's like for awareness. Um I think there's like a peak of like if you know a certain amount of stuff, it's just really fun to I think exist in that environment. But I feel like the, as I learn more, and especially, man, dude, these past like two weeks, I've just been like reading like Supreme Court cases from top to bottom and then like going through a lot of the sourcing material. Um, I've had a much, oh, fuck. There's like a whole genealogy I can trace back uh, for like my thoughts relating to this. I talked to, do you know who J.J. McCullough is? I know the name. Isn't it an author? Um, no, he's a, he's he, a Canadian he's YouTuber. I talked to him and yeah. e even before him, oh. I thought of, um, like I need to make more constructive arguments rather than destructive arguments. So I've been trying to think of the United States in more of a constructive light rather than a destructive one. Um, and then especially revisiting a lot of words written by people in the founding of the country, um, looking at like the foundation of Israel. Like, um, I think that Israel and, and the U S mirror each other in really interesting ways and that you have people, you've got like these P political philosophers who are basically writing out like how do I want to make the perfect country like what would the perfect country look like you know for Israel there's a bit of writing on this um, you know from Herzl and, and you know from Gurian and Heisman and like the early like you know leadership and everything and from the United States there's a plethora there's a dearth of writing on this right because you already had many governments and you had like a lot of the smartest people trying to write for government and, and figure out like how to design a state so reading all of that, gaining an appreciation for that, gaining an appreciation for a lot of the things the country has built on has just amplified my hatred for people that are on the other side. It just has made me hate them more. Um, and then especially diving into the court shit has made me hate them more. I feel like it, I feel like the opposite was supposed to happen. Not a dearth of, I'm sorry, well, a breadth, breadth of, I think is the word I was looking for. My bad. Well, I feel 90% of these content creators don't give a shit about politics or what happens. It's just a way for them to get attention. And so once you get more and more into politics and you care about this stuff, like obviously you do, 
then it's frustrating dealing with people who don't care one way or the other. Yeah, but that's the majority of like political commentators, right? Yeah. I think that's a problem, but I don't know. It's you know, a problem, we'll but it's our... not going anywhere. Yeah. Just... And that's what I was telling Josiah when, when you went offline, we were still talking. I said, a lot of people call me a partisan hack and a Biden dick writer, but I think I just, I, I, I live in this stuff and I see how much better the Democrats are and how full of shit the Republicans are and how they're tricking their own people. And so all I can do is, is point out why I think the Democrats are right over and over and over. And I guess I could play stupid and be like, well, Joe Biden did do this one bad thing. So let me try to bring that up. But I don't know. And I feel like that's kind of where you are right now, where you've like, you've learned so much. It's like, how the fuck can I even not explode on these people? Yeah, I guess we'll find, we'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah. Oh, any other, what else you got? Yeah, I just wanted to come in and, and give you uh say, hey, man, we're rooting for you. And <laughs> I just don't want to see you go crazy. That's all. Okay. Well, I, know, I know you're, you don't need my help, but yeah, I just want to say that. Yeah. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. Yep. Stay safe, bud. All right. See you guys. Hello, hello. Hey, buddy. Oh, what do you, I got? Sure, I'm very low on temper today. What do you got? Uh, I, I, I know. Look, I'm not here to uh, to antagonize or anything. I was just um, gonna pick your brain about like recent events, I guess. Okay. But if you're low on time, then we can do it some other I'm not time. Not low right? on time. I'm low on temper. That's all I'm saying. Temper. Oh, yeah. temper. Well, that's cool. Like. If you lose it on me, it wouldn't be the first time it's happened to me. But I, I don't think you're gonna. But maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm not trying to antagonize, though. So if you mm -hmm. feel like this isn't a good day to do it, then I'll, I'm happy to do something No, you're else. good. Go for it. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> so your charitability towards Republicans is over as of yesterday, right? Um, I would say my charitability is over. I would say that the levels have been uh, retreating for a while, and they continue to fall. Yes, I'll say that, yeah. So what? So so you said yesterday, and I know that there's a lot of anger and stuff now. I I understandably right. Um, so you said yesterday that like you're gonna make them say like there was an insurrection. Yeah. Before you move on to anything. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, um, I'm I'm thinking about like the anger that you're feeling. Is it because you understand the power of the imagery of Donald Trump? standing there with like blood on his face and his fist in the air and shit and you understand like most normies right that aren't living in politics soup all day like maybe me and you do or you to a much greater extent than me even but um you get my drift right like for them the power of that fucking stupid image is undeniable right like that's a you can't you can't you do a thousand trump rallies you can that's not that wasn't the thing that triggered me the hardest though the thing that triggered me like crazy i don't give a fuck about the image i don't know how i'm sure the image will be posted a lot but the thing that triggered me was all of the conservatards that were scouring twitter that were now suddenly so conscientious of tone and demeanor after mm -hmm. having these people speaking for years about how irrelevant tone and demeanor were to things like the office of the White House, that Donald Trump being presidential or not didn't matter. I like the fact that he's honest and genuine. I like the fact that he's a, he tells it like it is. But now, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, now we have to be so fucking gentle and careful because, oh shit, our words have consequences? What? That's what triggered the fuck out of me. Um, that Donald Trump and his ilk are the last savages on earth that can complain about the escalation into politically violent territory. They, the no, the moral right. foundation that they stand on is is less stable or le less stable than sand. Uh, like they have absolutely no grounds to speak with. So that, that, that was the thing that triggered the fuck out of me. I don't give a fuck about the picture or anything. I don't even know how much of yeah. an impact downstream this will even have on the election. It'll probably have a little bit of one, but I, yeah. I, I think it's gonna have like, well, maybe, maybe you can like help me with that then because my initial reaction as soon as I saw that, being as politics brained as I am, right? Was, holy fuck, he just won. Like the normies, the middle of the rotors, people that were like, eh, I don't know about this Trump guy. They all just were like, well, he took a bullet. And if you put that picture next to any picture of Joe Biden, that tells the tale to me, right? Normies are like, it's just weakness or strength. 
patriotism. Like, I know that's not what it represents, right? But in the normie brain, that's what they see when they see that picture. That's why I was so afraid of it. Oh, right? I mean, maybe. I don't know. I, that's, I mean, I can understand people being afraid of that. That's just not really playing a big part of, in my thoughts at the moment. What, and, and then another thing, too, that I was thinking about was what what like we're talking about. What does this mean? Like, what does the attempted assassination of Donald Trump mean uh, for us? What, but I'm thinking about, like, what does this mean for the psychology of Donald Trump? Like, if he had bad proclivities before, I think they're going to be worse now. I think he's going to feel emboldened. Right. And then on top of that, I feel like the party, which was kind of fractious, fractious after the primary and shit, there were a lot of people within the Republican Party that were kind of like, eh, Trump's kind of a buffoon, fuck him. I think those days are over. I think he just got lionized. He's a god in the party now. So like his agenda just became more powerful because of this, right? Or am I just doomering about that? Um, no, actually that might be true. Um, I think Maliki, I think was the name of the prime minister that we had kind of in Iraq after we got rid of Saddam Hussein. And I think people, oh, Maliki, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people felt like uh, his relentless persecution of um, Sunnis afterwards was driven by the fact that when he was growing up, I think his family faced pretty harsh persecution by Sunnis. I don't remember if he lost an uncle or something. I'd have to go back and look. It's been a long time since I've done any Iraq war shit. But yeah, the idea that maybe Trump feels more emboldened now because it's like these motherfuckers tried to kill me. So who cares if I throw a few people in jail or whatever? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. The, there's been a, you know, like one of the things that I'm sure down the road we would have talked about if this hadn't happened, what would have been like your charitability to some of these right wing people? Because I've always extended very little, if any, especially to like online talking head right wingers. Um, you know, I kind of cut my teeth in, in the uh, in the blood sports era, you know, arguing with those dudes on DP. And then I went on that fucking Kumite show <laughs> show, whatever the fuck that was fought with them over there like the, and and there was very little like charitability was not on my mind when that was happening right um sure i understand what you're saying yeah and i and i just i'm, I'm glad to see that because I, I i really do think that like your your voice is useful as an angry voice that's willing to say whatever he, he believes and not worry about people's feelings like you're edgy tweeting and shit people were hitting me up about that Right. They were like, because I guess in, in the narrative in their minds were opposed or something. Right. They're like, oh, do you see Destiny having a meltdown? And I was like, dude, I don't know if you've followed Destiny for long, but a lot of this shit is kind of like par for the course of Destiny tweeting. Like that is kind of like what you do. Right. You're very like boisterous on social media and it gets a lot of attention. I mean, like you would admit that. Right. Like that's part of your your brand. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's generally all purposeful. It's not just random. Like, I mean, no, I didn't mean yeah. that. I didn't mean it that way. I'm not saying that it's just like you're doing it just to grift or whatever. That was not what I meant. I meant like it is your brand to say wild fucking shit that other people probably wouldn't say on your social media. Sure, but I mean, like, there's substance to all of it. Like, like if I'm tweeting something, a particular thing, there's a reason why. And, and if I end up arguing with somebody about it, it's not just like, oh, I just thought this would be like the funniest thing to tweet at the time. Like, generally, there's going to be some underlying like rationale right. that there's going to be some underlying like political belief that it's resent, uh, representing or something like that. Yeah. So it's not, it's not comedy first for you on Twitter. You're not like trying to get the yuck yucks first and then it's politics first and then yuck yucks or. I mean, comedy first, I mean, comedy and everything else, comedy runs in parallel with everything else. I think. Right. Like if you, uh -huh. like if I, like if some guy, you know, like let's say that some black guy does something on Twitter and like the instinct, my first instinct is like, oh shit, like um, I noticed that your dad's not in the picture, was he ever, right? Like when we say like, well, what came first, like the comedy or the racism, like to even have that joke appear in your mind and then to like deploy it in that situation, it's like, well, they, these things are running concurrently with each other, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't one first and then the other because I think comedy is informed a lot by the actual views that you have of people in the world. It doesn't just come from nowhere, right? Like there are certain sure. jokes that um, there are certain jokes that Dave Chappelle wouldn't say, or that George Carlin would say, that are necessarily informed by their view of the world and society. Right. I'm a big fan of uh, you know like uh, social commentary through stand-up comedy. You know, Lenny Bruce, uh, you know, just refusing to clean up his comedy at a time where working blue was like illegal. You get you're arrested, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so a lot of these guys were very political in their comedy, and you're right. It's on a continuum is what you're saying, right? Like comedy and politics are not separated. They're, there's a blended area between the two that we're existing in. 
And especially when we're trying to be, you know, um, social media successes, right? Okay. Um, but yeah, no, like, like I said, people tried to come to me and get, get some soundbite off of me that you were being unhinged or crazy. I did think you might be having like a bit of a moment, like in terms of like mental health, but who wasn't? Shit was fucking crazy that day, right? Like it started as a, you know, just a normal ass fucking day. And then by the end of it, it's like, fuck, you know, the plan has changed. Um, okay, sure. I don't think I'm having a mental health moment. I think that I, I think that I tweet a lot okay. of shit a lot of the times. I think I fight with a lot of people a lot of times. I think that when I'm making fun of the right people, I think it's, a, it's like epic and based. But then when I'm making fun of the wrong people, like depending on where my particular outburst is aimed, people are like, oh shit, I think he's having a mental health moment versus like, oh shit, this guy's fucking hilarious and based. So anybody, uh -huh. for instance, that's saying I'm having like a mental health moment when I make fun of conservatives, all of those exact same people thought that all of my tweets about Palestinians and all of that humor was the funniest fucking shit in the world. Same thing with my Israeli fans. When I was making fun of Palestinians, it was like the most epic and based shit ever. But then when I was making fun of Israelis for things, they were losing their fucking minds saying that I was like, mm -hmm. uh, like the demon scourge. So I don't, I don't think that people have a good assessment of when people are having a moment or not, I think it literally just comes down to, does this guy agree with what I am feeling? Yes or no. And if he does, then it's based in Epic. And if he doesn't, well, now I have to find some cope way to explain it because I can't engage with any of what's actually being said. Sure. Do you think the math has changed on like a Biden replacement? Do you think it's gotten even worse risk assessment wise now after this? Um, no, because the risk assessment side would only be done on the Biden side, not on the... Um, not on the uh, not on the Trump side. Like if Trump does better or, or worse, I don't think that it changes the math on the Biden side. Just to reiterate yeah. my point on this a million times, because people are so lost in the sauce politically on this. Um, I think that switching out Biden, I think would be a huge mistake. But it's not because I have like an allegiance to Biden. And it's not because I think Biden is doing spectacularly. It's just because I think there's a lot of unknown obstacles to overcome in swapping out another candidate. And I think that there are so many unknowns past that point that it's almost impossible to make an accurate projection for what that candidacy would look like. Now, there's a reality where Biden slips enough in the polls and it's like, okay, fuck it. I guess just replace him um, and see what happens. But that's because you're basically saying Biden has almost no chance to win. Um, yeah. Also... People I don't think are willing to contend with this, although I've seen a few people tweet it, maybe they are. If Biden gets replaced, it's almost, it's like 99% that the person replacing him is gonna be Kamala Harris. Um, yeah. And if Kamala Harris I, I, replaces I him, I, man, I don't know about Kamala, but we'll see. Well, like Kamala, I mean, I, I know that you're like probably, I don't know if you're in like a charitability mode where you wanna be soft, not, not soft, I'm not, but like pull punches because you don't wanna undermine what may happen. Wait, um, hold on. To be clear, what? I have my personal positions. I never, ever, ever pull punches because of any particular thing ever. I never, sure, I sure. never do that. Sorry. Just be clear. Sorry. Yo, just to be okay. clear. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. For, I, I didn't, you know, whatever. That would be just, I don't know your community yeah, very well. That's fine. Your, just let you know. Yeah. Um, okay. So now I know. Um, but like Kamala, if to be frank, like for me has never been an answer, right? She, I think she does worse against Trump because like she dropped out before the primaries because she knew she wasn't going to win a single one. She knew she wasn't going to fucking chart on a single one. Nobody okay. liked her. I feel like um, Kamala was a diversity hire, basically, because Biden needed Georgia real bad. Right. And I think it worked, probably. Wait, hold on. I might uh, not know anything. I might be crazy. Wasn't Kamala Harris? Um, I might be exposing a lot here. Wait. I thought Kamala Harris worked in uh, California as a DA. She, she did. I'm talking about he needed the black vote in Georgia. Georgia black voters, he needed them. Are Georgia them black voters up. voting? I feel like they're more likely hey, to no, no, vote. Here, here. Okay, listen. We're talking about the primary. Yeah, I know. We're talking about but I'm saying right, that I think that black voters are voting for Biden because Biden is representing Obama. Right, but like his choice of like, so why do you think Biden chose Kamala Harris, a woman that didn't primary anywhere that nobody liked? Um, I think that, I think that, well, politically, I think she was a bit to the left of him. So maybe it shows uh -huh. up some support there. I, it, I don't, I don't know why actually I would have to go back and think about that, but I don't think it was to pull the black vote. I think it, okay. it, it, it we could go back and look, it wouldn't surprise me. I might be super wrong about this and maybe I'm just misjudging the black community a lot or something, but it wouldn't surprise me if Biden pulled better with the black community than Kamala Harris did. She doesn't come off to me like a person that would pull well. She doesn't right, come off to me like, with the same energy as like uh, in Georgia. Um, what was her name? Uh, Stacey Abrams? Am I making that up? Uh, Wait. That sounds right. 
Yes, yes, sorry. Okay, yeah. Like, she doesn't come off to me as, like, a person who's like, holy shit. Like, I think, like, the black community would maybe rally behind this person. Kamala Harris doesn't come off like that to me. But I, I could be wrong. Yeah. Well, um, I, I think it was the historicity argument, right? It wasn't necessarily Kamala Harris as a person. It was the fact that this would have been the first woman vice president and a black woman to boot, right? I don't think they cared about that. First woman I, black president or black vice president? We ever, we, yeah, yeah. First, first female vice president was a big deal to women, right? Nah. First woman, first black woman in high office was a big deal to black people, right? Did that? Okay, maybe. I, I, if this was any talking point ever, I totally miss this. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, maybe I'm wrong. Like, I'm throwing it out there as like, this is what, because like, I was baffled when he chose Kamala. I remember. Mm -hmm. Or Kamala. I was like, or, I'm sorry, I always mispronounce the name. Mm -hmm. When he chose her, I was like, what the fuck? Like, what? this woman that, like, literally one of the most unlikable people on the stage mm -hmm. dropped out pre primary because she knew she was going to get fucking raffle stomped. Sure. Why it might have been that might have it might have been the case. I'm, I just I didn't I just don't remember seeing that at the time. But I just think it was like this this historic. They they need Biden needed a candidate that was like historic in some way, and the first black woman in high office would have was considered by you know it was like I remember the media talking about a historic black vice president, you know, black female black vice president. Maybe maybe um, maybe it was yeah. But anyway, um, you know, uh, that's that's kind of beside the point. I think. Um, I, I just think Kamala, I, I think Kamala does worse. 100% does worse against Trump than Biden does. Sure. So we are, we're in total agreement on that. I don't, oh, just um, to be clear, I'm sorry, real quick. The reason why I say it would have to be Kamala, I, I don't know if you got this and this is why you're saying this. I didn't mean to say that because like she's the best choice. I just mean it's because logically, there's a few things. Um, logistically, what? She's the, she's the vice president, so she's the presumptive replacement well, for Biden should step down, right? A, a little bit. Logistically, she's the one that can use all of the funds from the campaign right. because it's the Biden-Harris campaign. If she were to drop, then all that money, I believe, would have to be funneled into a PAC or a super PAC. A super PAC can't work officially with a candidate anymore, so the coordination gets weird there. And you know there's going to be all eyes on any type of coordination. I mean, so that gets weird. And then two, right. regardless of if I think she's good or if black voters like her or don't like her or whatever— Having your black female vice president and then saying, we need a new candidate. And then like she looks up and her eyes light up and it's like, not you. Sorry. It's like, oof, that's yeah. rough. That's a really, yeah. really rough fuck you and get the fuck out of the way. That um, is, and, and like, it's also like <clears throat> she probably knows some shit, right? And would probably be charitable to the Biden campaign otherwise. And if you fuck her off like that. Like who knows what what kind of tell all book she writes or whatever, and it hurts. Nah, I don't. I don't think it would ever be like that. You don't I'm think just so? no. I'm just saying that. Like, keep in mind that as things are like so volatile and so uncertain. Uh, I just said the same thing twice. That, Dude, like, and, any introducing I'm even good. another type of thing like that is like fuck. Like, are we really about to toss our VP? Because that's another thing now that you can't attack Trump over, which I think more people should be. The fact that Trump has chosen a different vice president running mate versus like the one sure. that. Yeah, that's pretty wild, in my opinion. Um, See, I was like, you know, we, you know, when we talked, we had our big five hour talk when we you know, first met. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was saying I was, I, you know, and I kind of still was in that position until the Trump assassination attempt where I was kind of like, I don't know, dude, if they like threw Gavin Newsom out there, I think there is a dice roll where it comes up boxcars. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's a possibility. Maybe it's even a better possibility than Biden beating him at this point. But I think that ended. I think, I yeah, think the, I mean, like nobody, nobody knows. I'm like, I'm. I don't think I've ever said. Uh, I don't think I've ever said like, oh no, if they choose somebody else, they're definitely gonna lose. It's just the uncertainty, right? There are worlds where a different candidate is chosen, and it, like, it's interesting, it's new, it's exciting, it invigorates the party. You know, the guy speaks super well. He's like. 50 so he's basically a child in a uh, political eyes he's like very young um like that could all happen but like there's another world where it's like you know they choose gavin newsom and it's like oh wow look now the whole country gets to be homeless and have restrictive gun rights and right, look at the budget right. of california and we just talk about that for three months and then it's like oh and then boom you know cool yeah. instead of like five million homeless people now we can have 100 million homeless people or instead of like california you know banning you know the correct lower receivers for ar-15s now the entire country gets cucked on gun laws and like and yeah it's just yeah but who knows it's uh, impossible to say i think yeah i'm very like optics brained not not personally but i think that when i'm trying to think about the electorate as a big mass of people and how it reacts to things right 
I think optics are first. I think who looks better matters better, matters more than policy, matters more than anything you could drill down into, right? Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that or not? And we're, talk we're not talking yeah, about Yeah, optics is everything. Wants. Yeah, how people are perceived is literally right. everything. Right. And so for me, you know, Donald Trump, blood on his face, fist in the air, American flag f flying over a baby blue sky, that imagery is like you couldn't, if you had a trillion dollars, you couldn't purchase that type of publicity, right? Yeah, like sure. That, but that. I mean, like, it's, this isn't convincing anybody in, in the, like, nobody on the left is voting for him because of this. I don't no. know if it's swaying independents to vote for him. It's just energizing his own base a bit, right? I think that that is the question, right? I think that it might energize independents. And something that I haven't heard you talk about yet, at least maybe you have, is I think it might energize non-voters, you know, that, like, fucking 50 percent or 40 percent or whatever it is of people that just don't engage period right yeah potentially there might yeah. Be people that are like fuck holy shit that guy got took a bullet mm -hmm. and he stood up and pumped his fist i'm all right guess i do need to vote right yeah possibly yeah that's why i'm saying yeah you, it's the goal is to just turn out your own voter base yeah so right i don't think biden's getting any of those voters i don't think anybody's snapping out of the no voting coma right for going like i gotta vote for that guy that stumbles bumbles fumbles and you know no i mean the two the two benefits you're relying on um trump galvanizing our voters because of how much people don't like trump and then you're trying to hold on to um biden's record but if you if you throw a, a new candidate in now you've lost arguably as much as people might or might not care you've lost the strongest point that you can argue from which is biden's record now that's completely thrown out the window as well and now you're just fighting like i guess a, a, a perception war against a, a guy who lives in media perception but uh, i don't know yeah who knows um yeah i, I don't know man uh you know if you i've been kind of blowing the trumpet pretty loud about like the optics of this pretty much sealing what I saw was a pretty rough campaign for Biden going forward. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe I'm doomering too hard on that, but I'm of the mind where, I mean, there was that quote, did you, did you see that quote that came out? So like a scene, I think it was in the WAPO senior Biden official says, we've all just resigned ourselves to a Trump presidency at this point. Right. Yeah. Like, those I, people, I think that AOC made the best statement on that. If you believe that that's totally fine. You can believe that you need to resign immediately and you should let people in that actually want to fight for our political system. Um, it's yeah, it's time sure, to step down. Like anybody, like whoever said that privately, they should be outed. Like somebody should expose who be. they are. They should be, they should be exposed. I'll pay money. Where are my whistleblowers at? Actually, a public a challenge. If somebody has, if somebody has information and can provide reliable information for a sitting lawmaker that said that, I'll give you ten thousand. Am I allowed? To, wait, are you allowed to pay whistleblowers? I don't know if you're allowed to. If you are allowed to, and it's not illegal, I'll pay ten thousand dollars for the person that comes out with that information, with like some way to verify it. We'll publish it. Absolutely. Man, I'm not. I wish I had some money to throw on, in on that because I think that's a good fucking deal, bro. I would like to know. I would okay. like to know which because, like, look, dude. I don't think the WAPO made up senior Biden official and then put a quote, right? You don't Maybe. think they, you don't think what? Do, do you think like the Washington Post like would make up a quote and no. attribute it? To I don't think anybody would just, it? no, I don't think anybody would just make shit so up. Somebody said that shit then, right? Well, I mean, if they're, if they're reporting it, you'd think so. Yeah. Fuck man. Who do you think it could be? Who in his like, because it said senior Biden official. I don't think it was a right? Biden official. I think it was it was a sitting member of Congress. I'm pretty sure it's what they said. It wasn't just a Biden. Like, Hold like, on. Let me find the quote. Sure. Let me look at the quote real quick, because I'm pretty sure it said senior Biden official. Somebody tweeted it at me, so let me get it real quick. Sorry, man. You're good. <clears throat> oh, boy. Piers Morgan name dropping me. I think I'm going on tomorrow, and I'm sure he's going to want to put over my tweets. So we're going to have to. Oh my that. God, actively no. celebrating. So is the charitability the gone there too? Or are you going to have like your Hassan moment where you fucking call him a piece of fucking? Yeah. I don't think I'll call him a piece of shit, but it's going to be. <laughs> that might be my last Piers Dude. appearance. We'll see. This might be your last chance then to to call Pierce a piece of fucking shit. I don't want to call him a piece of shit. I just want to, I just, because I just think it's important that people need to understand like where, here's what I don't like as I've gotten like higher up into the media thing. I don't like when